Let's talk about the hottest AI image generator this week. Yeah, the mid-journey killer. Oh no, wait, Flux was supposed to do that. I guess this is the Flux killer now. Did I sell it? Was that convincing enough? Yeah, I don't believe it either. Look, none of these things is changing everything, as some would have you believe. And as much as I don't use mid-journey, nothing's killing it either. Look, you still got people reading a newspaper in this day and age. We've got the internet, you got all the news you want in your phone, but there's some folks that just like the newspaper. Hey, that's your jam, go for it. Likewise, mid-journey does a good job, and mid-journey has a bigger cult following than even paper newspapers do. So it's not going anywhere. So what's all the hubbub about? Well, it's about the news that was reported in several places the mystery AI image generator that rose to the top. What you've got is this website called Artificial Analysis, and they basically pit different models against each other, have real users like you or me decide which one we like better, and then they calculate and compute and come up with all these numbers and have a leaderboard. This is the leaderboard for the text to image arena. Recraft is right there at the top. That was the big news. Recraft version three to be specific because Recraft isn't brand new. They've been around a while. V3 is the new part and it managed to edge out even Flux 1.1 Pro on this leaderboard. Recraft was picked 72% of the time when it was pitted against something else and Flux 1.1 Pro was picked 68% of the time when it was pitted against something else. The way the arena works is really simple. It gives you two images and a prompt and says which image best reflects this prompt. Logo for green thumb, a sustainable gardening startup with a stylized leaf in a clean vector style. If I pick the one on the right up here at the top, it'll tell me that I chose Amazon Titan over whatever that was next to it. And then after you do a bunch of these, you can go see your personal leaderboard, which will show you which models you're rating. This is not a perfect method though, because a lot of times the two images that you have to pick from, they both suck. And I want to pick a none of the above, but I have to pick one. So it's going to show as being picked more on the leaderboard. Now, I don't know if they have ways to work that stuff out or not. I would just caution anyone to look at the leaderboard and say, Recraft V3 is at the top. Therefore, it must be the best generator that there is. Here's a few things from the Recraft community, the gallery, you might say. Whenever I see somebody wearing one of these things on their head, I, swimming caps, whatever they are, my first glance, my thought is, why has that guy got underwear on his head? And then I realize he's swimming and that's a swimming cap. It looks like there are either some very, very creative people on this platform or some very, very troubled people because I had some of the imagination is just crazy. It's not bad. It's not dark or nasty. It's just wow, like where did you come up with that on some of these? All right, let's check this thing out. So I'm in Recraft, I have logged in, I'm on what would be the home page, and that is the My Projects page. So I can create a new project right here, but this is also preloaded with some projects, and this is really cool. So let's click on this How To Basics project. And what we've got in here, this whole big gray area is a canvas, and they have sort of preloaded it with some things, and each one of these things is instructions or or visuals showing you how to. If I zoom in here, it's telling you how to generate images. Then if you click on this image right here and see what it's got going on, it says edit the text to generate a new one, change the word Sakura in the left panel to Oak and click recraft. So you come over here to Sakura and Oak and then recraft. So get a decent sized preview where the image was that we just swapped out or changed. And then down at the bottom, you've got two alternatives, the one that's showing, and then you can flip over and see this other version. And if you wanna make this bigger on your canvas, you can just grab any one of these handles in the corners and zoom it in or out. Then right next to it, it's showing you how to remove the background. Select this and then grab the scissors to remove the background. Moving down a little bit on this canvas, it gives us directions on how to create a style by using reference images. Down a little further, it's giving you a quick little how-to on using the lasso to select an area and then make a change to part of your image. Over here, it shows an example of the upscale. And then moving up, I think the only thing we haven't talked about is the color palette. I haven't really experimented with using your own color palette, 
But something I did find that's really neat is once you've generated an image, you can come over here to the adjust colors, click on this little toggle, and then you can move these sliders and recolor the image that you already generated. I, I don't know why this doesn't exist in every AI image generator. Now your colors don't have to be that radical. We can reset this back to what it was. Maybe you just wanna bump up the saturation just a little bit, or maybe you wanna take down the brightness a little bit. Now moving around this canvas, let's go ahead and close out that adjust colors. You've got two different tools that are accessed up from this upper left-hand corner. You got this little triangle dealy here, and you've got the hand. You can get to those with the keyboard shortcuts V for move and H for hand or you can come up here and click them. The hand moves the entire canvas around. The little triangle deal is what select objects or moves things if you wanna move an object on the canvas or select something on there. Down on the bottom right, we have tips and tricks that pop up like add a custom palette to generate an image in your branded colors. My favorite button in any application is undo, which is also accessible by control Z. You've got the layers so you can see all the different layers that are on your canvas and you can hide any one of them that you want just by clicking the little eyeball. And if you click somewhere else on any layer, it will center the canvas over the thing that you clicked on. This next button pops open the gallery, either the community, things you favorited, or history. I guess if you want to drag things into your canvas to add them, work with them, whatnot. Then you've got this little question mark button, and they've got a lot of how-tos that just roll right down the side here. I mean, you got tons of things that you can learn how to do. These will open up a relatively short video on how to do that particular thing. Let's go up here and grab my hand again and move this over sort of centered-ish, maybe a little toward the bottom. In this panel over in the top left, we have the create new, like create a new image, create a new frame, create a new image set, or create a new mock-up, and some suggestions underneath of that. You also have up top here, if we hover over this new image icon, it starts playing a silent video that sort of shows you what you're doing and how it works. Just a little five second deal. The next one over is about getting creative with text. Then we have the new mock-up. We have adding text, adding comments, which would be handy, I guess, if you're working on something with somebody else or, you know, if you're working alone and you just want to talk to yourself. You can also import your own images into the canvas if you want to use any of the editing features or combine them on the canvas, add text, and whatnot. The little drop down next to it just gives you a couple of extra options like the new image set, which you can already get to over here, and then the brush. I'm gonna come back out of this basics how-to deal to our home. Now this how-to basics, this is just a project that they preloaded into your workspace here in Recraft. You can delete that project. You don't have to come back to it. And if you do delete it, don't worry. I mean, there's still instructions and videos and everything else out there. But this to me is a really good way to get in here and sort of play with what they've set up for you with the step-by-step -step directions on how to do it so that you don't get lost. So the next one of these that they preloaded for us is this how-to mock-up. So we come into this project. Now my first thought is, holy moly, that is so small. But that's okay, it's our whole canvas. We can just zoom on in with that. I'm using control and my vertical mouse wheel. And it gives you the step-by-step -step of click the new mock-up in the toolbar. It's the t-shirt up there. So we would click new mock-up in the toolbar. That is right up here. Then click the canvas to open a blank image panel. That'll get you one of these deals, this little purple jobby. Then enter a text prompt to describe your mock-up base, like a t-shirt, a mug, whatever you want your image or logo or whatever you're designing to go on. Then you click the blank layer on top of the base and describe what you want. So like this orange deal right here. Or if you've already got the thing you want to put on your mock-up, you can bring it on in. Like say you've got this Statue of Liberty image, you can just import that right in. And the stuff in this preloaded project, it actually does work. So when it's telling you here, drag me, and it says drag and drop on the base and it'll automatically stretch, you can do that. We can drag this right down and look at that. Now it's stretched to fit, but it's way too big. I need that to go a lot smaller because I just want it, you know, they're on, on the shirt, not all over the guy too. And we'll probably want to rotate that. So we'll just get on one of these corners and turn it, you know, maybe like that. I think that's too big still probably. I mean, nothing against the Statue of Liberty, but to me, that's kind of an ugly shirt. I'll switch over to this hand so I can drag this to the right. And sure enough, that's what they thought that you would end up with. You could remove the background. You could also recolor the image 
image, whatever you want to do to it when you're happy with it, go ahead and export it. This one is really fun. It's telling you that you can use any image as a mock-up base. So you don't have to create the mock-up in here. You can even upload something that you've already got. So let's switch our hand tool to our move. That way we can select this. You would click convert to mock-up in the toolbar, which I've already done. This is a mock-up we can see by the little t-shirt and mock-up up here. Then we're going to grab this design and drag it just like the instructions there tell us. And this gets wild. So we drop it on there and we've got that design. I think this is the Philadelphia Eagles logo on this airplane and we can shift it. We can move it. We want it toward the back, toward the front. It's too big. I can make it smaller. Oh, now it's moving toward is putting it on the building. How cool is that to put a mural on a building? But let's drag it back and put it on the airplane. He's just backward. So what I'm going to do is grab one of these corners and then I'm going to just drag it all the way to the other side and then that'll flip it horizontally. Now I can make that a little bit smaller still because I want kind of the bird's beak to be the front of the plane and I'd really like for the eyeball to be right there at the windows. Maybe something right about there. I mean, I'm not an Eagles fan by any means, but that's a badass plane. Then we come over here and I guess this is a sheep and it's like play around with the mock-up generator. The possibilities are endless. I'm like, what do they want me to do with this dog and this sheep? But if we grab this dog face here and we drag it over and now I'm kind of making that sheep have a dog's face. I imagine you'd want to do some other editing there, but the point is they're telling you you can be really creative with this mock-up. It's not just about putting icons on coffee mugs. You can use your imagination and come up with some really wild stuff. Let's go back to home. They pre-filled another project here for us on vector generation. You start with your image shape, then you pick the model. They have several models there to choose from. Type your text prompt add your color palette, scroll up or down, set the level of detail, pick your favorite one and export it as an SVG. And that is a pretty big deal. In ReCraft, you can export your image, your creation as an SVG, a scalable vector graphic, which means that you can size it infinitely and it won't lose detail. It'll look great whether it's tiny or huge. And if you want to take it into something like Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop and do some fine tuning with it, well, an SVG is an excellent format to do that with. But how does this thing do at actually creating images? Well, let's find out. Back to my home page, I'm leaving all those pre-filled projects there because these are great for when you want to know how to do something. So I'm just going to create a new project, a blank project. I'll come over here and click this image button under create new. Now we need to pick a model. We've got all models recraft V3 or recraft 20B. I left that on all. You can also filter based on photorealism, raster and vector, illustration, vector art, and icon. I'm going to start with photorealism. So we'll say apply there. Your little sliders here, all this is, is if you want to add a negative prompt, exclude from image. This is that color palette that you can add or import from an image. Next, we need a prompt. I'm going to drop in a man looking at a billboard with a lot of text on it because supposedly Recraft V3 does really well with lengths of text incorporated into objects like text on a computer screen or a bunch of text on a billboard. So we'll see. The aspect ratio, we'll leave that at one to one. Two images, that's the max we can do on a free plan. And honestly, anymore, that's pretty much what I do in all the platforms that I work on. Style diversity, if you turn that on, you'll end up with different styles, but it says that you'll have reduced coherence and quality can suffer. So I I'm okay with leaving that where it is. If you're on a free plan like I am, the visibility is public and I am not interested in Halloweenizing uh, anything. All right, so let's click this recraft button. It says about 15 seconds, and at 15 seconds, our image pops up, or actually our two variations. We can go with either one. So we definitely have a man looking up and we're behind him. Let's check out the text. What would you be doing right now if you weren't reading this message? Well, that billboard has some problems. Let's try the other variation. What would you be doing right now if you weren't reading this message? Well, I think that one is correct. I don't think our man here in the image is reading it though. Let's switch up. We'll stay in the photo reel and we'll go for a yellow Labrador retriever napping near a fireplace as snow falls outside the window. And by golly, I'll say that's a yellow lab. There is snow outside, maybe falling near the window, fireplace in the background. I think this nailed it. 
and the quality looks really, really good. The only issue I see is what looks like perhaps some snow that's inside the window or maybe this is all glass and the fireplace is outside. I don't know. That's a little weird. At first, I thought it was just spots on the fireplace around. Let's switch over, check out our other variation. All right, fireplace, yellow lab, snow outside, snow inside, snow in front of the fireplace. Yeah, not quite sure what the trick is to avoid it. Let's see what it can do with a really long detailed prompt. This is a portrait. She's supposed to be mid thirties, gentle smile, bright hazel eyes. Are those hazel? I'm this old and still don't know what hazel eyes means anyway. Dark brown hair. I know what dark brown means. So dark brown hair. Yep, looks like we got that. This is a very realistic looking image. I am totally cool with this one. Very fine detail. Yeah, I'm zooming way in on this thing and I think it did a fantastic job. I would be very happy with this image. Oh, there's another variation. Let's check that out. This one as well. I think it did a good job. I don't see any issues there nice high quality image. Let's go back to a shorter prompt. One of the things that I always like to generate, which is Main Street in a small Midwestern town in the US. Ooh, that's going to be big because I'm creating it over top of this existing image that I had super zoomed in. Something that the image generators really struggle with in these types of photos is the buildings going down the street on the side will usually have something really weird going on and roofs that don't connect or disconnect or just go all kinds of sideways. This one at first glance is looking pretty good. The street's good. I'm zoomed in here pretty good, but there's a little bit weird going on this vehicle and this vehicle and well, even that one back there. And I don't know, it looks like we have one or two maybe wrecked over on the right side of the street and something going on there. But again, I am zoomed in an awful lot on this thing. If I bring it back out at that level, a lot of those things down the street that I was criticizing really aren't noticeable. I don't want to be overly critical. Now, wait a minute. What is happening with this flag here? That seems sort of weird. The way it's just straight out horizontally from the corner of this building when we've got one right there. All for being patriotic, but that just seems strange. What's the second variation look like? At first glance, it looks just very real. It doesn't look all fake and artsy. It just looks real, like authentic. The signage on the buildings, you know, not so much. Those don't make any sense, which is the case for most AI image generators. As we zoom in, the cars do get a little bit weird. What we see at, you know, normal resolution, I don't see buildings jumping out as strange. Maybe I'm just missing it. I'm sure you'll let me know if I am. Let's try something different now. I'm going to ask it to give me a stylized modern logo for Bob's AI lab, which is fictional and does not exist. I want to switch that from photorealistic to let's drop this down and say vector art. And we'll just go with this vector art version three apply. And now let's hit the recraft zoom out just a bit here. Well, by golly, there we are. It's got it spelled right. It has an interesting logo going on. The color is good. All right, what did the other one come out like? Well, that one got the spelling it looks like, right? Bob's AI Lab. It did some weird stuff. Not a huge fan, but it followed the prompt. If you've been paying attention, you might have noticed this number up here. The number of credits that I have remaining has been going down. Like I said, I'm on the free plan. So let's take a look at what this thing costs. On the free plan, you get 50 credits a day. Everything you generate is public. It's one execution at a time. You can't you know, hit generate and then hit, or I guess they say recraft. You can't hit that a couple different times on different things. It's one generation at a time. And the maximum number of images per prompt is two. On the basic at $10 a month, if you pay annually or $12 a month, if you pay monthly, that gets you a thousand credits a month. Generated images are private. You have full ownership and commercial rights to the generation. You also get the creative upscale. They have a precise upscale and a creative upscale. That's becoming pretty common on most platforms. The precise upscale is to just try and clean up what's there and make it look good at a larger size or the creative upscale will let the AI take some liberties, which it may even fix some things that are bad, but make the image overall look bigger and better. You can have two concurrent jobs on the basic plan and you can run up to four images per prompt. And if you find that a thousand credits isn't enough for you, well, you can buy more at 400 credits for four bucks. 
if moving up from the basic plan, the advance to $27 a month if you pay annually or $33 if you pay monthly. In advanced and pro, the things that are changing here are just the numbers. So it goes from 1,000 credits a month to 4,000 in advanced or 8,400 in pro. Four concurrent jobs instead of two or 10 concurrent jobs if you go to pro. Recraft is really clear down here about ownership and commercial uses. If you are on the free plan, Recraft owns those images images. They will be public in the community gallery and cannot be used commercially. If you want to own your creations, keep them private and use them commercially, they tell you upgrade to a paid plan. And in all this talk about this thousand credits, 4,000, whatever, 50 credits on the free plan, creating or modifying an image uses one to two credits. Creative upscale uses 20. And when we're talking about one to two credits, that's per image. So if you're generating two images per generation, then that's two to four credits. If you're generating four, it's going to be four to eight. Off of this pricing page, you can find a full credits usage table appendix. I'm sure that is fun reading. So what do you think? Is this the mid journey? Nope. The flux killer? I don't think so. I mean, I think it's decent, but I'm not ready to throw flux out the window at all. I tried to show you all the highlights, generated some images, so you can decide whether it's the best thing since the invention of the internet or just another model. Either way, I appreciate you hanging out with me and I hope to see you again in the next video.